The main reason for this video is to show you what I did to bring my engine back to life. Uh, long story short, I ended up with the Lyle 1500 cylinder horn tool. The reason why is because it's rigid. You set it up for a certain value and it uh, takes the material out of your cylinder wall evenly. When I measured my cylinder walls with the cylinder bore gauge, it uh, showed me some um, values which I was not very happy with according to the service manual. When I also measured my pistons, the clearance between the pistons and the cylinder walls were much higher than the service manual says. For those measurements I used micrometer with a one ten thousand of an inch accuracy and also the cylinder gauge with the same accuracy. Started honing my cylinders with this three stone horn with a 240 grit. Um, it worked pretty well for its purpose but not in my case. Uh, they were still out of round, they were, they were still a little bit of taper. It's just mainly because this is driven by the spring. It follows the shape of the cylinder wall kind of, if it rotates. It's not rigid, it's just, like I said, it's uh, driven by the spring. And if your cylinder wall is out of round, then it just follows the shape of the walls. For deglazing, it's perfect, I believe. I just bought this um, rigid horn. Instead of going to machine shop and for once paying some money, but secondly, like there is no satisfaction, there is no fun. You just get the part ready to go. There is no fun. I still have some room for error. I still have some backup plan. If I won't be able to make it work, I still be able to set it, set it back to the shop, get it done over there. This looks promising. I did a couple cylinder walls already. I will follow up with another video about it. Then I understood really how this thing works, how to set it up, at least I believe in it. And according to what I achieved so far, I can tell that, uh, that I know this honing tool a little bit better now. So what is most important is to understand how it works. These four pieces are racks which hold uh, grinding stones or honing stones and also kind of like a wipes or brushes here. So those stones are on the opposite side and those brushes 90 degree angle the other side. It's also marked where you supposed to put the stone at also on the other side and the brush rack is not marked at all. I did couple marks here with my Sharpie just make sure that if I install one stone in this position it's gonna go back in the same rack just in case maybe it's not that important and maybe it's maybe it is so I did the same with my stones and I mark them down it's simple marking just make sure that stone goes in the same position this tool comes with a set of two stones one is an 80 grid another one is 180 grid it also comes in this plastic box with some other accessories this is a wooden stick with a sandpaper on it and a brush to clean those stones and the kind of manual how to use the stone. I will get uh, to those instructions at the end of the video. I will keep, go keep going with the most critical thing uh, with this with this tool. It is how to set up the tool perfectly straight. So those stones has to be perfectly parallel on top, in the middle, and on the bottom, or actually vice versa, this is the bottom. So on the bottom, middle, and on the top. I tried multiple versions how to achieve that. I used my caliper, which has accuracy of one thousand of an inch. It's not really great for the work on the engines, but in this case I, I believe it should work. The first thing, I measured almost everything on this tool. If you imagine the stone, sits on this rack, they have to be parallel, you have to get same measurements on the bottom, middle and the, and the top. Then if you get same measurements on those racks, they might be the guide at the first place. So I measured those racks against each other. 
So I'll start on the bottom. I apply the pressure with my two fingers on those racks and it shows 60, 71, 72, 60, 60 and 6105, which is pretty much useless to use this as a guide. I try this first because I thought when this is parallel, like perfectly parallel, when I install the stone on it, they should be parallel too, but it's not the case. So let's install these stones. With the stone installed in the closest position to the body of the honing tool, you'll be able to measure the distance between those two. So let's start on the bottom. 72.5 the middle, 72.80 and the top, 72.5. So apparently the middle is slightly bigger. To confirm that, we use the caliper body. If you put it flat on your stone, then you see if the stone is perfectly flat or not, because this is. I don't feel really too much play, but I see there is a little bit of light coming from the bottom. I'll do the same for the second stone as well. You take this wooden stick and you grind it the way that you take some material off of the off of the stone. And then you can use this flat surface again and make sure the stone is flat. Remeasure it. And what is the biggest difference you can get? On those three on those three spots as little as you can get so just get as close as possible to all those three because this stone is not a rectangular shape it is shaped like this on purpose I'm always looking for the parallel distance between the bottom center and the top of these stones but how to achieve that yeah you can use this little stick or sandpaper and pretty much go flat on it these stones will show you some signs where the material is taking off. I don't know if it's on the camera, if it's visible here on the camera with the camera, but you can see the dust across the whole length on this side of the stone. Same on the other side. Then you see where the stone is making some work. Look for the dust on those stones before you clean them. Try to make this stick always flat as possible also be aware that this angle here this first sharp angle the 45 degree angle might be crucial and when you insert this tool into your cylinder wall it's rounded right so it's not a rectangular shape what is touching the wall is this part here this part here or maybe even this 45 degree angle sharp edge you used to measure these stones like that but that's not the right way how to do it the right way how to do it is to measure this part of the stone throughout the whole tool because what takes some material off is this stone here on this edge and this edge here or the 45 degree angle which is here made on purpose okay just to remember not this edge is crucial but this surface of the stone is crucial so try to make it nice and flat and watch for the sign of the dust on the stones it will tell you where the stone is making the work now you would like to probably see how to put this tool together it's not really hard to do just to show you very quick this is an extension rod the connecting point is here, I already uh, screw it in there. Then you have do two systems of holes. They are different in distance between each other. And so are these racks here. So the shorter distance is for the stone. The main thing you have to remember, these two rods, they have grooves. The grooves have to face to middle of the tool. I used this tool already. I marked down where it was previously installed. I have a little black dot here. This stone has no 
mark goes to the opposite side, like here, but the grooves facing to the middle, like that. So the edge of the rack stays in the middle. I take the other stone, as you see there is a black mark, there is my black dot, this rack was sitting before right here. And again, the edge of the, of the rack is in the middle. Let's do the same for those racks for the brushes. This is the basic install of those racks, but how they hold together. This is a feed pinion, that's what I call it, and it has those grooves. We have those grooves on those racks inside as well. This has some grooves, grooves against grooves, make some progress here. So once you insert this pinion inside, you can adjust the width of the tool. Simply twisting this big nut, I would say, this brown one, and those racks, they are driven by this pinion. Once I turn it, those racks goes in and out. And I have those six pins sticking out of the body, and I have multiple holes here on the bottom of this brown nut, which are actually meant to fit in there. Now, when you press it against those pins, the tool is locked up. You cannot move it at all. And now it comes the funny part. This shiny smaller nut is the micrometer. You have the gauge kind of on the top of that brown nut. And then you have a little, little dot on the shiny part here. And you can turn this thing. As you turn it to the left, those racks go in. If you turn it to the right, those racks expand. Before you start any work, you have to turn this shiny smaller nut all the way to the left. That's the starting position. But you cannot twist it all the way to the left. It doesn't have any stop position. So just be careful. Otherwise, it might just go off of the tool as well. So once you see this gap here, you turn it back, back in until this gap closes up. So you'll be ready to go with the main assembly of the tool. Now it's time to install those stones and those brushes. To install them, you have to have some room between this rack and this green body of the tool. So what you want to do is to pull this brown nut out, turn it to the left a little bit so you have some gap here now and put it back in. Now we're gonna grab our first stone and I mark everything down like I said. This is my marking. So I use this stone already. I put in the same rag like before, same position, everything is the same. You have two rods here, you have two openings here and you insert the stone just like this. You slide it in there. Try to push it, push it just on the metal body of the stone because the stone is glued into this metal part and I, I just don't like to push the stone itself. I rather push uh, this metal body or the metal base. So let's do another stone. Same thing. Push it here on the bottom. Now these brushes. The second comes here. Just be careful when this thing rotates. It might hit your stone right here on the corner. Try to uh, avoid it and avoid the contact of this whole thing and the stone. As you see, I can hit it on this side as well. One thing I like on this tool is this bottom part. It avoids contact between the bottom part of your block or the bearings bracket, whatever it is, the stone is hidden behind it. That's a really cool thing to have and it can save a lot of headache. So what you want to do before you insert this tool into your cylinder wall, you pull this brown nut, turn it to the right, those stones, they retract. If you insert this tool into your cylinder wall, then what you do is to turn this brown nut as much as you can to the left. So those stones, those racks actually expand. And then you try to find the closest position to the wall and push it in there. 
So once you push it in there, it stays against those six pins I talked about a few minutes ago. And then readjust the distance between those stones and the cylinder wall with the stop nut. If you start turning it to the right, it will expand to the size of the cylinder wall. And then what I like to do is to turn it back at least a half turn and try how it goes. It must be clockwise rotating, so to the right side. I try a couple strokes up and down and uh, you go by the feel when you will change your stones, brushes, whatever. I never touch, I never press on those grid stones. I always use a flathead screwdriver. I put it between the rack and the metal body of the stone base. And then you can push it out that way. Make your other hand ready to go. And push it out again. And it's out. When I was honing, I never passed the half of this whole tool. This is a four inch, four inch stone. So I never passed two and a half or so inches. Also, when you finish your, let's say 10, 15 strokes, whatever, then the tension is still there. So what I did, unscrew this stop nut like three times at least. After you release this small nut, or the pressure with this small nut, you can pull on this big one, retract those stones back in, and then pull the whole drying home tool out. I remember when I finished, let's say number five, then I turn this nut three times, at least three times back, and I place it on the same number again. Then I pull this whole tool out of the cylinder, I brushed my stones, I clean my stones, I clean those wipes, I clean my cylinder walls, I remeasure it, then I know where I'm at. Every second time I remeasure those stones as well. So there was lots of measurement, there was lots of patience. And then when I insert this tool back in, I know where I finish at five. I turn it back in two and a half times. So I finish with my mark on the opposite side of my number five, let's say, on the opposite side, and I started doing my thing again until I get to number five. You can remember the resistance, you can remember how it felt. I never started in the five again, uh, brought it back to five in slight small increments. And at the end, how to use this tool, how to assemble the whole thing together. We'll go through this really quick. There is a discussion if you should run it uh, dry or wet. According to these instructions, you can dry honing or honing with a honing oil. So there are two differences with the, with the finishing, but uh, there is no way somebody says it's only dry hone. It can be done with a honing oil as well. It just depends on your preferences, what you prefer. Use it only clockwise. Make sure stones are parallel their full length. You should measure the cylinder wall, of course, and see where you can start at. Basically, you're starting with the, at the smaller part of the cylinder wall. The speed of the home should be somewhere between 1200 divided by the cylinder diameter. Example is as a 3 inch, so 1200 divided by 3 is 400 RPM. That's what your speed should be at. Also, there is a big warning. Do not take home out of the cylinder or allow to pass too far through the cylinder while it is running because it might cause some damage. If you dry honing, I recommend probably wearing some mask. It was pretty dusty here. And what is a good practice is to size your cylinders the way that you use coarse stones first until your pistons slip in tight and then change the stones for the fine grit and do the last finishing finishing touches